Now then, let's talk about the weekend's hurling. Nicky English, you're there. Hi, Joe. How are you? Yeah, very good. Good to have you with us. And Dahi, you're with us too. Hi, Joe. Good evening. Good. Dahi Regan with us. Nicky English with us. Lads, let's start with Leinster. We'll work our, through, our way through the weekend in chronological order, uh, certainly at the main championship anyway. Dahi, I think it's worth starting on Dublin because it will, it will be so easy to overlook them in amongst the many stories here. Uh, Pat Gilroy went in last year and put a bit of steel back in Dublin and Matty Kenny's come in and he's built on it. He was missing his first and second choice free takers at the weekend. Parnell Park has become a bit of a fortress and uh, that was a brilliant, brilliant win in many ways. I even thought the way Chris Crummy has the licence to race up from half-back and go for goals and go for the jugular was admirable because so often inferior teams get tight and tense and get defensive in those kind of big games. Yeah, it was a tremendous win for Dublin and um, I think there was very few who would have predicted it. I, I do believe that the Matty Kenny uh, factor, you can't understate it. He's five or six years now on the Dublin hurling scene and you've just got to look at the man's record. He's been part of enough a Galway management team that were involved in two senior All-Ireland titles, made no bones about the fact that it was a job he craved and then went and took a, a, a took on a major project with uh, with Kula and they were extremely successful you know dual all ireland medal winners and he's brought that nous and tactical nous to the dublin scene and not since Dalo left uh, 3 years ago have we had a manager and i've always felt that anthony daly's achievements in a national league and a leinster title should have been a stepping stone for for greater things for Dublin and then they obviously went through a long period for a couple of years and there was a lot of disharmony within the squad mm. and Maggie Kenny uh, has proven to be the key here so he's tactically very astute and Dublin very very fit very physical very strong and really went that Galway and sometimes you know I know Nicky's alluded to the fact about Parnell Park before there's, there's no doubt home advantage clear shouldered as well all of those things when you factor in all those things and what was at stake it was one game, it was one chance, it was one shot. And he knew the rewards were there. But it was the way Dublin actually played. They matched Galway physically. Uh, they attacked off the shoulder. They played Hurling in, in, in a really fast manner, opened it up. And like like you say, culminating in, in Crummy's goal, which is superbly taken, mm. and for half-back like that, to travel so far and have the courage of his convictions to do it, he was rewarded. Yeah. And the harder you work on the training field and the harder you work and the more chances you're willing to take from a positive point of view, everything came off for them. And uh, the story was about them. It's a big it's a big shock in many respects. Not that Dublin beat Galway, but that Galway are gone out of the championship. That's obviously a big shock. But I think from a Dublin perspective, it's uh, it's tremendous for the hurling world to see them at the uh, at the end and are going to be involved in the shake-up uh, I think from, from every aspect, yeah, it, it was a fantastic performance and a wonderful win. Yeah, Nicky, I know I think you've a few misgivings about Parnell Park as a championship venue, but that aside for a moment, it does feel like Dublin are really back on track now from the daily days and they're going to be a force hopefully going forward, which is good for the game, but they're certainly back on track in the short term. Uh, Dublin were very, you know, they were very good all through. The, you know, they had a good league campaign, um, won, won plenty of games, uh, you know, they went down and... and uh, I think they like they put it up to Kilkenny a fair bit as well in Nolan Park. So you know the like Parnell Park is tight, but you look that's that's at the end of the day that's, that's irrelevant really. They mm. they still have to perform. And I I before the match thought that Galway were going to have probably the edge in scoring on Dublin, uh, but it's like it was the exact opposite. Dublin, you know, they were playing to a system. They were very fresh, very fit. You know, Sean Moore sits back there, and it was Dublin got the goals, and the goals actually, you know, they were all the time they were vital in in the game. You know, we were you could see the score coming through, and God, we were always on the back foot because Dublin were able to score goals, and then Chris Crummy, like he's been outstanding for DCU and very very good player, that for a huge man and very athletic, and you know he he came up and and as Donny said, finished the goal very very well, and. You know, there was probably that was probably that Galway had come back a couple of times before, but like the timing of the goals and just you know they, they didn't have any they didn't have any more left really, and mm. it's a huge the, the big shock is that of Gal, is Galway being out of the championship, particularly after the performance the previous Sunday against Kilkenny, which was fairly impressive. I thought now they were they looked like a team that was going to be getting more dangerous, and with with Joe Cannon coming back, he was going to add a lot. Oh, they obviously they had to 
to rush Joe Canning back in mm. against Dublin, but sure, he did come back. And like, like as I said, Dublin were missing, you know, a few of their free takers, but Oshin O'Rourke st- stepped up and, you know, he's a player that we had in UCD and he's, he's a very good player. And Owen O'Donnell had to go off now. I know Conor Whelan probably balanced that up on the other side, but, you know, Dublin haven't had a, a clear run. Donald Burke, is, it was, you know, he's another, probably one of their best forwards and he's mm. missing. So, you know, Matty and his team have done well with, you know, they have a reduced hand. You know, Keno Callan hasn't been involved either with true injury. So, you know, they've done very, very well. They're they're very athletic, very strong, very powerful. And, um, you know, they'll, they'll push up to anyone in the quarterfinal they'll, because, you know, that's the, 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 this has been a successful year regardless for Dublin. And it can only get better if they, if they, if they turn up and, and really put the uh, quarterfinal, put the other team to, to be in their collar in that. Yeah, Donny, it's hard to make sense of Galway this year. I know the TV cameras weren't there in full for the game on Saturday, so maybe it's hard to just talk about this game in isolation. You can certainly say, once again, Galway scored no goals, which uh, is an issue. No goals against Wexford. I appreciate they wouldn't all Ireland without scoring a single goal, which seems like an extraordinary stat. Like, they played a lot of the league without Niall Burke, Garoge McInerney, Connor Cooney, Joseph Cooney, David Burke, Dahi Burke, Johnny Glynn, for uh, various reasons. They never quite clicked, they never quite seemed in sync. We thought Nolan Park marked the beginning of that and they would um, jog on, but that hasn't actually happened at all. Yeah, they were shorn of the uh, Orn Murray lads uh, and uh, the Thomas's guys who were involved both in the intermediate and in the senior all the way to the very, very end. But that was going to give them an opportunity to try players out and it's been well remarked that Galway really didn't find anybody. And I think the warning signs were there Last year as well, I think mean, John Hanbury was carrying an injury into the All Ireland final. Garoge McInerney was not having a good day in the All Ireland final, and we we mentioned this before. He went right half back, but he's he's a central player, and that's that's it. And I think it was I've I've, I've often alluded to Conor Cooney's uh, lack of form uh, as been very very instrumental, and I mean that from a positive point of view because I rate him that highly. I think he's a superb player. Uh, it really is one of the top forwards when he's on, but for whatever reasons, he hasn't been playing to the same levels. Maybe there's injuries or whatever. I, I do think confidence has been a problem. Niall Burke has never hit the heights of previous and just hasn't done it on him enough on a consistent basis. Johnny Glynn has come back. He's been out of the country for a bit. Jason Flynn was wing forward against Wexford. And I think Conor Whelan, for me, has been the mainstay up front. He's a superb player against Kilkenny as well. He was... He was so instrumental. So Nicky's correct to point out his absence really balanced things up the other day because he's been the best forward that Galway have had. Joe came back and, of course, gets a couple of points with his first couple of touches. But, I mean, I, I took a lot of criticism from Galway fans for suggesting that we, it was like deja vu with Galway. Conversations we've had four and five years ago that without Joe, Galway were runners. Well, this year they were. This year, they, the same dynamic wasn't there without him. And that's a, a wonderful compliment to a wonderful player that, mm. you know, when he's missing, it's like if you took TJ Reid out of the Kilkenny team now, Joe. I mean, h- how do you think Kilkenny would do without TJ Reid? They're making great strides in progress and with the infusion of new blood. But he's the fulcrum and he's the talisman. And it's it's not a criticism of, of, of other Galway forwards. It's just a fact. Yeah, it's a reality. Statement, a fact yeah. That with, without Joe... They are not the same team. And, you know, Dublin just went for the juggler, showed them no respect. They were mm. very, very physical in the tackle, mm. very in, 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 intense in the way they went about their business. And didn't give Galway any room to manoeuvre whatsoever and eventually wore them down. And it's the way you beat a team like Galway. You know, you've got to stick with them point for point and stay with them. And at the end, you know, the killer, the killer score at the end and give them no time to come back because good teams like Galway, if they get on top and, they, and their confidence goes up, you know, they can bury it from a long way out. But mm. Dublin just obviously had worked on that and said, let's keep ourselves in it, in it, in it, in it, all the way up to the end and let's see where it brings us. And they deserve a lot of credit for it, but it's a really disappointing year for Galway. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, Nicky, a final one in Galway, because around this time last year, they were stampeding their way through Leinster and we thought they were nailed on for another All-Ireland. They looked imperious at the time. That didn't happen. And now it's been quickly followed by this summer. Is there another All Ireland in this group? Or are you getting a bit worried about them now? I, w- I was actually getting worried about them uh, finishing up last year. Really, uh, you know, they were probably a bit unlucky that they got to draw with Kilkenny and they got to draw with with Clare, and they started to run out of energy. But I think come the All Ireland final time, you know, they they were 
they had either it was a lack of energy, but there was a there was a lack of leadership there. And were were it not for a tour de force from from Joe Canning in the second half of the All Ireland, they were going to be under awful pressure. And so, to me, they had reverted a fair bit uh, to being dependent on Joe last year. And all, so, I I I think even Joe's injury occurred really in the act of trying to single handedly haul him over the line against Watford in in the league in. Nolan Park, in which in, they were generally very, very un, unimpressive, I thought, on that particular day. Yeah. And we've seen, like, Watford's form really uh, hasn't done a whole lot for Galway's uh, reputation in my book after that. Yeah. And um, so I, I, I think Galway are going to be under a little bit of pressure. Uh, you know, to, they, they need to find new players. You know, Michal is there four years. Does, does he, does he, I, I'm sure there'll be nobody wanting him to leave, but will he have the we have the, the the heart to keep going for another for another fifth year, yeah. and um, so it'll be um, it, it'll be interesting. But they need they more than anything they need to find new players, and I'm not sure that uh, wh- wh- where they have that. Uh, it'll be interesting, you know. Uh, I, I, I they, it needs a new a new uh, certainly the, the same group of players for me are not going to they're not going to win it anymore. Meanwhile at Wexford Park it was a thriller and then odd scenes at full time as everybody tried to figure out what the hell was going on. Eventually they did. Uh, Davy Fitzgerald here talking to Moore Terras who was there for us. There was so much at stake today, it was incredible. Um, went down to 14, we were down a score. We managed to get the draw. I think we fully deserved it. We gave them a second, a goal in the second half, that was our mistake. Now they missed a few points as well, so I definitely think we deserved a draw. And. Um, I'm, it's not about me. I'm not delighted for myself. I'm so delighted for them guys because they work so hard, you know. But we can really see that tonight, the relief especially, because you saw you was, it was in your team and you just kind of had to show that to people. Like, this team has worked exceptionally hard for me. They would do anything I asked them to do. And you could see that outsider tonight. Things are going against us and we still managed to hang in there. And I've had my time. I've played in all Ireland's one all Ireland's and managed I actually so, so enjoy being with this bunch, it's incredible. And um, for them to get this means a lot to me because I know what to put in and um, it is emotional. I'm that type of guy anyhow that wears his heart in his sleeve and we'll get in trouble at times, but my God, the atmosphere down here tonight was incredible. Um, My own personal view is I think the Leinster Championship has been exceptional. I really do. I think there's one eighteen twenty one that hits the hurl and everything tonight was manly. And I know teams might knock up two thirty. If they do, then you have to look at other teams who aren't defensively as good as they should be, you know. Um so I'm happy with that result today. I was just gonna say before you go running away from me, two weeks time facing into Kilkenny again, that's gonna be some battle. Yeah, I think about that first thing in the morning. I want to go in and just relax and chill out for a while because I badly need it but um, I don't think I want to chill out in there can you hear the music I don't know the, the lads do that just to relax every night I think it's important to relax uh, after every game whether we win or lose you just have to relax the mind down I'm going to win and join them now for a while anyway, and we'll just chill out and um, get back to work again tomorrow <laughs> it doesn't sound like the most relaxing kind of music but anyway they were in good form uh, Nikki, I know you were there obviously for Sky. This was a hell of a game. This was full blooded, uh, physical, plenty of needle as well. Like it was proper attritional stuff. Davey referenced it there. That's for you, Nikki. Sorry, have you got me? Yeah. 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 Sorry, Joe. I, I, um, yeah, yeah, it was, um, it was hugely entertaining out. It, it was great. It was feral stuff, really. Like they were really went at it. And from the word go, you know, Fergal Horgan probably you could probably left a little bit too much go starting off, but you know there was plenty of uh, fellas squaring up to one another, and you know all through the, the challenges were ferocious. You saw, at, at times, even pop- at times, even over the line, like I thought you, I, I I totally agreed, and you called it out on the commentary when Matthew O'Hanlon almost with a like smile roar into the face of uh, it was must have been T.J. Reid after he caught a ball over him. Like it, it went a bit over the line at times. At times it was brilliant. Like there was one moment where Liam Ryan was basically smashed as he carried the ball out, got up straight away, jogged back into his position. I think Porg Foley pointed the free as well from miles out. That's brilliant. You've no issue with that. Maybe at times O'Hanlon went a bit over the line. I appreciate how that's going to happen in a physical game, but it was it was that kind of night. Yeah, well, I think Matt, Matt O'Hanlon paid for that afterwards, really, because he, yeah. you know, that yellow card ultimately. Uh, 
was the, was the cause of, you know, his second challenge was, was rash as well and it was a yellow card, you know what I mean? So, I mean, that could have cost him maybe if there was, there was plenty to go. But, you know, I mean, that's, that's a feature of, of Gaelic hurling, Gaelic and, and hur- football and hurling at the moment, which are, you know, when someone gets a score, they're coming out banging into someone else. And I think that's something that really has to be looked at. You know, it's, I think it's a little bit, there's, there's no need for it really. But in, in general terms, like there were some unbelievable tough challenges. You know, TJ Reid, you, you said, like he, he was really held well by Matt O'Hanlon, which mm. is the other side of it. Matt played well as well. Mm. But just in the second half, you know, he was, TJ was pulled for over carrying, but after getting a huge shot from John, from Jack O'Connor, who had come on, you know, you saw um, it was Lee Ryan banging into Adrian Mullen and knocking him back, but your Adrian Mullen came back for more and more as, and, and really grew as the night uh, grew into the Kilkenny jersey and the, uh, as the night went on and got a brilliant goal after a very you know a, a, a midland pass really at best from from Colin Finley well picked out but he had a lot to do to control it and score it mm. and you know there, there's not much between the teams but it was it was hugely hard fought and I think Davy Fitz alluded to, to in his interview there you know you see teams scoring two thirty. And, and I think there is a marked difference between the Leinster Championship hurling this year and the Munster Championship. Munster has seen some mostly one-sided games, really, yeah. uh, all through. Um, 30 points scored, kind of, that is your score very regularly, very loose. Whereas in Leinster, the teams have been very much the same level. You see a ferocious match, really, between uh, Galway and Dublin, a ferocious match between... Galway and Kilkenny, a ferocious match between Kilkenny and Wexford. So it, it, I, I would say that the Leinster teams are probably more battle-hardened mm. and they'll go at it again in the Leinster final hard, Kilkenny and Wexford. And oh, It won't be easily, easily called because Kilkenny certainly need reinforcement on, on, on top of what they have. But they, they had Killian Buckley coming back, they got a bit of game time into him. They had James Marr coming back, they got a bit of game time into him. Owen Murphy you know he's back and showed showed his worth. Really, I'd say if they could get Richie Hogan back to the kind of form he was in by the quarter final last year, mm. and you know they that they, they they'll need everyone really to be to because physically, you know some some of the lads, Billy Ryan, um, Richie Leahy, they're they're just not not up to it yet. They're they're fantastic hurlers, but maybe if they, if, if they get more room in Crow Park, it will suit them better. And you know there was. I'd say there was there was plenty of holding and pulling mm-hmm. uh, that that was left left run there on Sunday. Now it, it, or Saturday night, it, in some senses it helped the game, but it was in complete contrast to the refereeing yesterday, if you like, between Tipperary and yeah. Limerick, where basically everything was nearly being pulled, and there was five or six yellow cars. Like there'd have been a lot of yellow cars in uh, in Wexford the night before if that yeah. if that was the, if, if that was the rule of thumb, you know. So it's, there's an inconsistency on the on the refereeing as much as anything, but but I suppose just. It was a fantastic game and brilliant entertainment in in Wexford Park. You couldn't beat it for, and it it it, it really, um, it it really copper fastens the idea of home and away matches yeah. being a good idea in the championship. It's just fantastic really to get those full houses. Like I was there at four o'clock, and and the place was was nearly full at that stage. Like it's amazing how early people are going to the matches. But. Yeah, it was an amazing occasion, and I came across on the TV. Dahi, you might come in on what you made of the two teams and also the refereeing of the game. I'm glad you brought up the, the issue of the refereeing. I think it's a very good comparison that Nicky has made in relation to how the games over the weekend were refed. And it, it opens up a debate, and I'm interested in this because I know Brian Gavin very well over the years, and I, I would have watched him closely in those games he refereed between Tip and uh, Kilkenny. Mm. Back to years, those those magical All Ireland finals, and I always felt that Gavin was the obvious choice to ref them because he had a history of letting it go. Yeah, and we were entertained with some of the best All Irelands there's been in the last twenty twenty five years, and certainly O nine, the best I've ever seen. And I think Brian Gavin lent it to that. And I think from an appointment uh, point of view, I think the GEA made the appointment specifically to be Brian Gavin that he was going to aid the spectacle we were going to look at. Mm. So to reference Nicky's point there, it's interesting in that. We want to go and we want to be entertained as supporters and neutrals. And we want to see hard hurling. We want to see open hurling. Yesterday for me was ruined in many respects by one, I guess, I guess maybe Limerick's 
uh, view that they, they took as to how they were going to play it. Whereas yeah. Tip really wanted it, and you could see it in their players. But the amount of yellow cards, etc. So the question I, I kind of would pose, and I'd be interested in Nicky's view, would be this: Should referees be encouraged to review the two games the weekend when they get together for their for their um, reviews? Mm. And maybe should they? I'm throwing it out there: Should they be encouraged to maybe? Take Southern Night's game and say, listen, lads, let's not blow everything. Let's, unless it's really blatant, let it go because it's more of a spectacle. Because with the eyes of the media on top of all these games now, referees' performances get dissected. Mm. And stop-start games in Hurling can be really difficult to look at. Mm. Whereas Nicky's right, there was a lot of borderline stuff on Southern Night. But Christ was a very, very enjoyable to look at. And in many respects, aided and abetted by the way it was refereed. Rightly or wrongly. Mm. Yeah, no, it's an interesting point. And the two teams, anything jump out, out at you? Well, I wasn't surprised. I mean, I, I, I fancied Wexford before the game. I, I fancied Wexford before the start of this year to possibly win silverware. I haven't seen anything to change my mind. And I've been critical of Davy before in relation to certain aspects and, and kind of off-field. I've never, ever uh, felt anything other than any team that he's with he brings a professionalism that's there to be seen. Facts and figures, you can't argue facts and figures. And when he says he's not delighted for himself, he's delighted for his players. He should be delighted for himself because, you know, he's brought Wexford up to just more than just a level of competitiveness now. Yeah. They're, they're, they're contenders for a Leinster title, which I believe they'll win. Yeah. And it's not been derogatory to Kilkenny. Nicky's hit on why some players just aren't battle hardened enough yet. Are they contenders for an All Ireland final? I wouldn't like to be taking them on later in the year and be assured that they were going to be a soft touch. Wexford aren't a soft touch. Let's turn to Munster then before time really gets away from us. Claire and Cork. Dahi, I mean, you're, you're a big fan of Cork. Are you getting ever so slightly worried about them or are you okay with this? With uh, Cork, is it? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that was a banana skin yesterday, and, and they slipped. Mm. And uh, listen, we knew what Clare were going to bring. I mean, it was a pulse there; it was going to come out. And Ennis is not a nice place to go. And, and I mean that it's difficult for opposition teams. It's it's the crowd are on top of you, and they're they're a passionate vocal support. But at the end of the day, they they don't score goals and points. But they certainly played their part. And Clare were stung and badly stung. And Cork needed to react because Cork couldn't guarantee what was going to happen in the other game. They had to look after their manner. And they weren't able to do it. So when, when, when the gun was put to Cork's head in, 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 a, in a raucous kind of atmosphere and Clare going at them in a, in a big way, Cork, it doesn't suit Cork because they're a free-flowing type of team. But when you get in front of them, like they did similarly to Limerick, but they dodged a bullet yesterday. And, you know, what, what Limerick did or didn't do in the other game is immaterial. Clare aren't there because of what Limerick did or didn't do. Clare aren't there because they didn't turn up until yesterday. And that's ultimately why Clare failed this year but mm. they certainly redeemed themselves but from a Cork perspective they were my springer from the start of the year they were never for me uh, a tip or a Limerick or a Galway who to me were the, the standout three teams but I felt Cork were the most likely uh, of everybody else to be able to put one over in any of those teams and mm. not be a total surprise if they'd won an All-Ireland final mm. I've seen them twice this year so far in the flesh I still am not convinced that Cork will win an All-Ireland final. I still think the winners will come from what we saw in Munster yesterday. But Joe, I've said this before, and I said it coming out of the Limerick, uh, after the limerick Clare game. The one thing I could see catching Tip and Limerick is that if they become embroiled in a three-game saga, like happened with Meath back in 91, mm. with the Dublin games, and let's not forget then they drew with Wicklow in the next game. Mm. And by the time they got to the final, you know, the steam was nearly gone out of them at that stage. That would be my only concern, majorly, yeah. for Tip and Limerick. Now they'll go into a Munster final, and I'll tell you, that'll be totally different from yesterday, and it's most likely they will meet uh, in August. Yeah, I mean, that that, that um, dublin Mead parallel, Nicky, is an interesting one. Certainly John Kiley and his team selection yesterday is trying to avoid going down that road, and you suspect he wouldn't have been utterly bereft if they had come third in uh, Munster Limerick like they did last year. How far off, you know, say, All-Ireland final intensity was this game yesterday? I, I, I think that game yesterday was, was a long ways off. Uh, I'm, I'm not, like, maybe maybe they're not capable of any more, but on, on, based on the, on the two previous days out for both teams, you know, yesterday was, was, was far off in intensity terms. Uh, I, I actually agree with uh, fully with Dottie there in terms of 
the danger for Tip and Limerick is that they, they, they'll get caught up in this. Now, Lim, Limerick have no choice the next day. They're at home in Limerick. They have to go flat out. They can't really afford to leave any more. Uh, leave that on the shelf and, 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 and look for any excuses. And if they won it well and good, kind of the thing as, as, as was the case yesterday. Yeah. They'll have to go full, fully blooded at the Munster final inside in their home ground against, uh, against, you know, an age old rival. And like, tip, tip actually on yesterday's form, you know, okay, Limerick are hard to read, but, but, but tip are, tip are, Every bit as good as Limerick, and maybe maybe a little bit more. But now they have they have picked up a few injuries. Now, the, the nightmare scenario for both is that they draw the Munster final. Yeah, you know, and they'd have to go at it again. Like that's it to be bad enough to go on three times. But the next now, like the question for Tipperary is like you know you, you can't do it because you know you you you, you have to go full blooded for the Munster final because that's the way it's always been. But you know, like like the, the teams that win the Munster final over the last. 14, 15 years, like it's been like a, a millstone around their neck yeah. to be going into the semi-final. Most of them are subsequently, sorry, not even most of them, the vast bulk of them. I think, uh, like, I, I need to, to get back in it again, but I, I have a, a two out of 14, I'd say, are, it's, it's in that realm anyway of of Munster champions that have subsequently won the Iron semi-final, maybe yeah. three out of 40. So, you know, it, it's it, like you're going to have the likes of Cork coming in, you know, Nice and rested into. You'd imagine getting through to a quarter final going to be dangerous. And whoever comes through the quarter finals are, you know, they're they're back on the roll. And you know, you're either you're you're coming out there of a Munster final uh, with a certain amount of. If it's Limerick, it'll be the first. You know, they'll want to win a Munster final at that stage. They'll be All Ireland champions, mm. league champions, and Munster champions. And you know, you're just sitting up waiting to be to be to be got at in the in the next match, yeah. and that hasn't always worked out very well. And Nicky, um, yeah, I, I was yeah. just going to, and, and just uh, finally, because I do want to ask Dahi about uh, Offaly, but on Clare, to summarise where they're at, I mean, the players, according to Anthony Daly in the Irish Examiner last week, they called a meeting <laughs> last Monday effectively to apologise to Jerry O'Connor and Donald Maloney. They had felt that they were letting the management duo down. Like we saw Jerry O'Connor, the passion on the, the sideline yeah. went overboard. That goes without saying, and he shouldn't have done it, and he'll be and he'll be punished. But certainly, we saw a fight in the players. We saw a management team very engaged. That looked like they were all playing for each other and, and still, uh, you know, very much together. So this Clare team, I guess, a similar kind of question to Galway. Like, are we going to see this Clare team do something, or is twenty thirteen going to be the millstone millstone around their necks for the next five years? You know, it was it, in some senses it might have been easy to do a gist in some ways because there was no pressure. There was, you know what I mean. I know they had. They did had you a not think there was? Did, 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 did you not think there was huge pressure on them? No, I thought I kind of felt there was big pressure on them. Yeah, no, I, I, I thought, they, I thought, they, I thought they'd have a chance yesterday, and um, I, I, I think we, you know, I, I don't know. I think their scoring rates really. They got goals yesterday, which they hadn't got before, but yeah. their scoring rate really <clears throat> over the last couple of years, in fact. Other than the semi-final replay last year against Galway, their scoring rate just hasn't been enough. You know, Aaron Shanahan really, he, you know, he, he came and it looked like he was going to do something. But in general, they don't score enough. I, I think yesterday was more about Cork, and, and I certainly thought Cork would be <coughs> a serious force this year in the championship. I thought them based on, this, on their semi-final that they would deep in the squad, looked like they had done so. And that, you know, come the championship, they would, they would kick off and, and, and really be dangerous. I've seen them a couple of times now, and I wouldn't have thought them bulletproof going up to Innes and has proved that they're not. I just think they have they have defensive problems, and and they also need to play a certain style of game where the the, the, the it needs to be very loose out around uh, in, in midfield where they where they gallop on, you know, and then they use that speed that they have to score from there. I I don't know whether they're all Ireland contenders anymore. To be honest, I think they can be dangerous because they'll be fresh versus. Versus, uh, if they get back in as one of the monster teams in the Ireland semi final, that could be that that they could be dangerous in that in that sphere. But um, I, I I certainly don't have the confidence yeah. in them that I had at the start of the season. Well, we'll see what Jerry O'Connor and Donald Maloney decide over the off season as well. Finally, Dahi Offaly, Austin Stack Park, one eighteen to one sixteen. Offaly down to the third tier now of hurling. I, you know what strikes me about this more than anything is I would say over the last decade if we went through the archives we would be shocked at the number of times we've had you on I guess as a regular voice in the show and certainly the Offaly voice to almost sound the alarm and say this is going in the wrong direction. I, we Probably once, twice a year we've kind of had this conversation and uh, here we are 
and it shows no real signs of abating or is there the beginnings of work being done do you feel to reverse this well there's, there's lots of people doing doing work with with clubs and myself and Dygan have been heavily involved with underage as are as are many others um i probably didn't help the situation on on friday with kind of my outborns which i i greatly regret the expletive that i use and i certainly regret the timing but i was very very angry and very very cross of uh, at what i was aware was was happening but i want to put it on record my respect for joachim and brian carl and what for those guys have done and i've said it regularly they they haven't brought us down here and a bunch of players that were there the weekend they they were the custodians of the jersey this year but they're not the guys that have propelled us down to the depths that we've reached now and I've, I've never been negative towards them and I have a lot of respect for what they're trying to do. However, sometimes I feel if you say something in awfully and you give an opinion on it, many people, you know, would prefer if you, if you, didn't, if you didn't say anything. I was, I was very down the weekend, to be honest with you, like everybody else was. And uh, I spoke to many of my former colleagues last night, etc., who, who agreed with the content of, of what I had to say. But... I feel very, 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 very strongly that I know our county board would like to like like the likes of myself to say nothing and shut up, and uh, you know I can do that. That's fine. I can do that. And going forward, you know, maybe I will, and just say, well, well, what's the point? I mean, I've been part of an off management team for a couple of years back in 04 and 05, and we were on the end of hidings, and we got a lot of criticism, and, you know, you had to take it because you were there. You were the custodian in that particular year, mm. and um, that's what you have to deal with. There's so much wrong. There's so much wrong in a small county that everybody has a view, and everybody can kind of put their fingers on it, and that's fine, but I just feel that we just haven't been taking the action, and I'm sure your, your listeners are probably sick to their teeth to listening about Offaly, because here we are not even talking about Kerry and I was at the game, or talking about Antrim's achievement and beating us, and Leash, how much they've come on, and that type of thing. And I'm sure they really are probably sick to their teeth. I thought Michael Verney on the podcast this morning uh, summed up very well the uh, the feeling of people in relation to the issues that, that accompanied the weekend. And I'm not going to go into them now, but, you know, you're right, Joe. We, we've we spoke about it too many times, and I really thought about it a lot during the course of the day and trying to get business done and the whole thing to say, do you know what? I think going forward, I'm just going to shut my mouth about Offaly Hurling because you're upsetting people that don't want to be upset. And uh, I think if everybody kept their mouth shut, I think, I, I honestly, our county board would love it if we did. The likes of me, and we kept our mouth shut. And, and do you know what? Maybe, maybe it's just time, you know, to, to just shut up about it. And, and do you know what? I think I've done what I can do in, in my time in Offaly with underage clubs and my involvement with Offaly senior management. And you know what? Maybe some people are right. Maybe I'm better to shut up and let other people have a view or not have a view or do something else about it. I'm, I'm coaching young teams. I continue to coach young teams. I do it because I love it. And I try to improve young fellas. And that's it. And I'm just going to do that and play a bit of golf. And after that then, like I say, I regret using the expletive that I did. I was, I was very cross. And my timing was wrong. Uh... But I have no regrets over the content of what I had to say. Okay. Well, listen, we'll leave it at that for now then. Thanks a million, Di. Nicky, thanks very much. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.